All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, very excited to talk to an individual ahead of quite the ambitious crossover event. You love to see it. And going down on New Year's Eve in Japan, we got Bellator, MMA, and Ryzen Fighting Federation clashing. And as part of that, an intriguing bantamweight fight with Juan Archuleta and Su Chul Kim. And happy to be getting to talk to Juan. How's your day going so far, man? Seems like a busy one. Yeah, it's going good, man. This is the uh, last day I could do all my little knickknacks that I need to get done before I leave on Monday. So super excited. Yeah, it seemed like something that's been on your radar for a while, like just listening to some different interviews. Like It seemed like you were into like the, you know, Pride FC guys from back in the day, like Vanderlei and Fedor and a lot of those kind of guys. So like, what's the excitement level for this one? It seems pretty high fighting in Japan. Yeah, man, this is like history in the making. This is history in the making. You know, this is the first time this is ever going to be done. Uh, promotion versus first promotion. So to be part of this um, whole event and to make history, it's like being on the uh, ground steps of uh, boxing when they first did this promotion against promotion. And from there, you see it take off. And now boxing is what it is today because the promoters decided to take that leap of faith and uh, push these athletes. Uh, Scott Coker gave us a dream to go out there and let our dream be become reality and really do prom- promotion against promotion. And so you got to pay homage to that and, and respect that. And now I've just been training my ass off just to, you know, pay my respects and go out there and get the best performance I can come fight night. Yeah, and how long had you known about this, like, just general concept for, like, when did you initially get word they were looking to do, like, a Bellator versus Ryzen event? Like, obviously the cross-promotion has happened over the years, but this is to, like, another kind of level. Yeah, this is five of our best versus five of their best, you know? So this is by far a lot of promoters talk about it, right? Like you got Don Davis of PFL running his mouth saying, oh, you know, Kayla Harris will fight uh, uh, Cyborg and I'll pay a million dollars. It's like, shut up. No, you won't. Like, get all your champions and then fight us. Otherwise, shut the hell up. Like, don't say your fighters will be all our fighters and the only one you're interested about is Kayla Harris and Chris Cyborg. I would go in there right now and beat their 55 and 45 champ. No problem. You know, so don't sit there and run your mouth. Same thing with 1FC. Oh, we, you know, we don't see, you know, we'll only you know fight with the ufc blah 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 it's like shut up dude it's because you guys suck you guys do mismatch fights all the time and i'm about to fight one of your previous champs and show you that we are better than you like and you know this isn't like you guys have the best you know so we're going to prove that come fight night bellator is looking to go five and oh i know i'm willing to do i am going to go out there and do my part and show just complete domination yeah, I mean, you touched on it there just with your opponent being like a former, you know, one championship bantamweight title holder. And also, you know, I noticed he was a road FC champion as well and got the jump on the, you know, bantamweight Grand Prix champion for Ryzen last time out. So it strikes me as a guy you'd be like acutely aware of even before this fight was announced. Or was it more of like you kind of studied deeper into him when the fight was set up? No, man, I mean, I'm a fan of MMA. I've, I've watched it since the late 90s, you know, and um, I've always been intrigued into it. I've wrestled my whole life, so it's been it's been part of my life um, growing up. And so, you know, it's just something that I'm very passionate about. You know, I'm, I'm educated when it comes to martial arts, and, you know, stepping into the ring that night, it's, it's going to be memorable for me. It's going to be a complete honor, and I'm, I'm going to pay homage to those that came before me. Yeah, it seems like on a lot of levels, you've been really getting into the whole thing, like the press conference in Tokyo. It looked like you got in some great training over there and stuff like that, too. So it seems like a lot of good things leading into this Ryzen debut. And I guess I'm curious because I saw like you had a deal a bit ago that was like exclusive to Bellator. Is this still, I mean, technically under the Bellator banner in a sense? Like, is there the option to do some of these other cross promotional fights going forward? Or do you not know about that as much? Yeah, I'm I'm uh, exclusively signed to Bellator, but again, Scott Coker has the balls to drop on the table and say, look, it, we'll put our best against any of, of your guys' best that you have. And so, you know, he's not afraid to take that step and literally let us live out our dreams of what every MMA fighter wants to do. If you go on Twitter right now, you'll see guys calling each other out that are in different promotions and talking about it. And their promoters saying, oh, this will never happen, blah, 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 right? Well, our promoter said, well, this is about to happen. This is going to happen come New Year's Eve, whether you, you believe in it or not. Like, this is going to happen. 
and it's going to happen New Year's Eve. So I get to do that. I get to be one of the one of the five selected to go out there and fight a guy that should have the title for Ryzen, just like myself. I should be having the title for Bellator, and I've I have had the title for Bellator, but uncircum uh, unfortunate circumstances have happened, but. Um, Good. Luckily for me, it put me into this position, and I believe that's why the things happened that the way they unfolded. You know. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely in a great spot, and I'm curious because there's some obvious differences being in like the Ryzen framework as compared to Bellator, like you know, soccer kicks being allowed, there being ropes and stuff like that, like as opposed to like the cage kind of confines. Have you like curated your camp a little differently, like working in a ring and stuff like that, or? No, man, I mean, a fight's a fight, whether you're doing it in the street, in the cage, in the gym, in the ring, wherever it may be. I mean, I have a very pride-style type of fighting in me anyway. If you see my fights, I, I, you know, came close from kicking people in the head on on occasions of like overwhelming myself and just just fighting, you know, it's, it's fighting. You get, you get, there's no like, when you're in, when you're in the cage, the, the, everything you you just you're just in a fight you know you're getting punched in the face as hard as hard as the other person could punch you in the face so you know you're not thinking about the rules you're not thinking you're thinking about you killed or be killed you know when you're in there so now there's uh a, a, a least amount of rule uh, um there's not as many rules as we have for bellator going into this rising fight so it makes it extremely dangerous going into this fight like for both fighters like we get to do things that we're not accustomed to doing but at the end of the day it's a fight the only thing we're not going to be doing is is scratching biting and headbutting and kicking in the privates you know so um other than that it's everything's a go uh 12 to 6 elbows knees on the ground like everything's going on in this fight and it's going to be it's going to be awesome it's going to be a real fight yeah for sure and i mean it's kind of an interesting time for the fight too just because of like how the grand prix has been laid out and stuff like that like it feels like a situation where you'd be almost like waiting in the wings for whoever wins out of that you know mix versus dots grand prix finals and then whoever fights Sergio Pettis for the title thereafter are you also kind of looking at it from that perspective too like it seemed like you were eager to like jump into the Grand Prix if like something were to open up but like do you kind of like almost enjoy that sort of spot in a sense like you've got this cool opportunity coming up and then when the dust settles you'll probably be like around the top for contention yeah I mean look at I want to keep fighting like the belt the way I see it I'm not fighting for the belt anytime soon it's going to be the end of next year uh uh is by the time it's probably going to happen, right? And that's if they stay healthy throughout their fights. So I'm not putting all my money into the bank on that. What I do want to do is keep performing. Like, I love going out there and fighting. Like, I fought seven times in one year one time. And the time before that, I fought six times. time before that, I fought five times. So I'm an active fighter. I love fighting. It's something that I'm passionate about. It's not something that I run from and just doing it to say I'm a fighter or just to, you know, enjoy the fame and fortune. Like, I I want to go out there and compete. I want to work. I want to go out there and I want to fight other opponents that think that they're better than me. And I want to put on performances that are going to, you know, uh, make make their mark in history. And so whatever that may be, whether it be a title fight, whether it be moving up in weight, whether it be fighting the next best guy, that's what I'm what I want to do. So, you know, granted, after this fight, everything goes well. We're pushing the fight in L.A. on the Fedor fight. Yeah, and I mean, would there be any particular opponent you're looking for on that, like, upcoming Bellator card or just more being on the same event as, like, Fedor for the send-off kind of thing? Look, at the unfortunate thing for me, there's not a lot of people lined up ready to fight me, right? Like, a lot of people stray away from the fight for me because they're in for a dog fight and i'm the type of guy when a promoter's mad at they pick me to fight them because they either a want them to lose or two they want them to get the shit kicked out of them and so i'm in stuck in a weird position where no one really wants to fight me unless they have to or in, as, if it's for title contention or for the title so you know to be what it may if anyone's willing to fight sign that sign that dotted line and i'll be my signature would be right behind yours yeah well you've always been a game sort of individual for sure and have done so across like multiple divisions and stuff like that like even with like king of the cage before coming to bellator there like is that kind of like the main division you're you're looking at because i mean it seems like the bantamweight cut is one you've like 
got pretty down, pretty down solid and stuff like that. But like, would you want to compete in certain featherweight bouts going forward, or is it the main focus on one thirty five? Yeah, man. I mean, you look at mine and Pitbull's fight. Granted, what happened before the fight with you know my corner getting thrown, a couple of my corners being thrown out of my corner, and the the hectic drama that happened in the background going into that fight. By the time I got back, my mind stayed back into the fight. It was the third round with Patricio, and uh, it started becoming a lot closer fight. So that rematch is still looming in the air, and I'd like to do it before he called. He he runs off in the sunset, you know, and uh, you know. I feel I've called out Pedro Cavallo. I've called out Boris. I called out these guys, Maz Burnell. And, you know, unfortunately right now, the money for me right now is down at 135. So, and that's fine. Like I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay pushing this, but keep me active. If not, throw me up with these guys and, and let me make that title run up there. If, if, you know, if the title's going to be uh, in a distance, you know. So if not, I stay down at 135, and I'm willing to, and I'm, I'm going to get my my belt back. It just depends what weight they, they uh, solidify me at. And would that almost be more gratifying capturing it a second time as compared to, you know, the initial reign where you cemented yourself as champion, or would they both just be like cool career moments in their own kind of way? Yeah, I mean, I definitely won it already at 135, right? And, uh, you know, just like my previous organizations, I like to do it in multiple weight classes and be a two-time uh, division champ. But, you know, be what it may, in God's timing, things are going to unfold for a reason, and and, and, and the opportunity is going to appear when it does, you know? So right now, I am super grateful for this history in the making, promotion against promotion. And Sucho Kim right now is a game opponent, and we're about to put on a fucking hell of a show. And I believe our our, our fight is going to show the well-roundedness of both of us. We're both good on our feet. We're both good at wrestling. We're both good at jiu-jitsu. It's going to be very similar to Barzola, and the fans loved it. The fans were oohing and aahing the whole time in Long Beach because it was a great martial arts fight, and that's what this fight's going to be, and we're going to we're going to steal the show, and I, and I know that fans are going to be intrigued into this fight. Yeah, that was an exciting one with Barzola there. I mean, this time, though, when you throw the kick down there, I mean, it ultimately didn't land in the, you know, certain place there. But when you threw the, you know, kick down there last time, you'll get to do it now for real and it'll be all Gucci and everything. Hell yeah, for sure. I'm just grinning my teeth thinking about it, right? Making the land. Ah! No, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited, man. Like, this is going to be a, a fan favorite fight. I hope fans are really tuning in and getting to watch this show because it's history in the making. Yeah, it seems like you've been really having a lot of fun. Like, I saw the one Insta post where you had, like, all the samurai swords and the outfit and things like that. But I also saw a post where you were saying food hits different in Japan. Like, what are some of the things you're really digging food-wise in Japan? Oh, the beef by far is amazing. The the, the fish is amazing. I mean, just the, the noodles, like you don't really get to experience people's culture until you go into that country and experience you experience great food here in, in America with the, with the different cultures and, you know, trying different foods. I'm a big foodie. Uh, and so going there, it was just to try the exact way they make it. You know, they, I sit down and they were like, Oh, what do you, what would you like to eat? And I just said, whatever the chef recommends, I'm willing to eat. And they were like, all right. So, you know, that's the type of person I am. I'm willing to try and be uncomfortable in situations and, and try their best, you know? So, no, that's cool. I'm inclined to do the same kind of thing whenever I travel. I like to be a little adventurous, like see what it is like is eaten and stuff like that and try like some of the different local delicacies and whatnot. Like I was just in Brazil for a little bit and kind of came back there. And yeah, it's good to get to like try these different things and, you know, do so when you're traveling a bit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm taking my family out there just so they could experience that. My three kids and my wife were all going out there. And, you know, first I'll stay on my diet that I'm doing, and then after enjoy enjoy the delicacy of the culture, the the native culture there. Yeah, I love that man, and yeah, I'm very appreciative of getting to talk a bit before this next fight here. So I appreciate you making some time, but I imagine you have. A lot of other interviews and a lot of other things to do and everything for the rest of the day. So to that point, is there maybe anything you might want to add kind of as a parting thought as we're wrapping up, Juan? Tune in. This is history in the making right now. Risen vs. Bellator on New Year's Eve. Don't miss out. I'm telling you, you guys are not going to not only want to miss 
not gonna want to miss my fight, but also my walkout is gonna be very memorable. Like I'm paying homage to true warriors that came before us. And if you're into history and you're into that type of thing, my my walkout alone is gonna be a showstopper. So I'm super excited for that. Thank you to all my sponsors and everything that's been supporting me throughout this time. Scott Coker, you are the man for making this happen. Bellator, thank you guys for going above and beyond for making this happen, man. Media, thank you guys for covering this. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, the, they, the fans deserve this one. Yeah, anyone who's really into following mixed martial arts as a whole is supremely excited for this event. And it's always fun seeing these New Year's Eve cards in general, but the excitement compounded that much more for this one. And I mean, they really did a good job of, you know, pitting the best in Ryzen against the best in Bellator. And I think that is also, you know, crystallized by this matchup here. So again, to reiterate, really excited for this one. And I appreciate you making a bit of time to talk today, Juan. You have a good rest of your day and looking forward to checking out the fight when it goes down. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.